morning. Bonjour. We are very happy to be here. Contenti hafna li edina uwe. Very thankful. Ne ringraziamo kom. It's our first time in Malta. La uwe darba li edina Malta. First time in Bozo. La uwe darba uwe. And we are very, very impressed. O aina vera impressionati. With the beauty of this place. Vil gmil ta dal post. It's truly a privilege to be here. Wa privilege linkun wa wek. We are Jan and Maria from the Netherlands. Ahna Jan u Maria mil Hollanda. And we are visiting here because of the ministry we have. Edina u Malta mhabal el ministri el ministri li Anna. We have an organization called Traveling Light. Ahna na organizacion li se ma Traveling Light. We travel light. The travel ya ukfif matanchi kona farit ma. Only with hand luggage. Hand luggage bese kona. We are a traveling light. Ahna traveling light. We shine our light in sometimes dark places. El daulta el daulta ana i reflecti anka posti it mudlama. And we travel light spiritually. O anka spiritualment ne travel ya ukfif. We carry no burdens. Manjo rush pizi it mana. Which sets us free to listen to other people. O beka hanan kuno hil sa bish nisimau to help ni sohara to help other people. Bish neinul hatihor to pray. Bish netolbu maybe speak a word from God. Ista kuno na asmu kelma min antel mulei mahom. And several years ago, we met Lawrence and Todd. Shift it sini rolt aina ma Lawrence uma Todd. And many of the. Ministries that we visit are Teen Challenge. Half na mil ministries lehana in in zuru ma Teen Challenge. And most of the projects that we support have to do with drugs and alcohol rehabilitation. Half na mil project lehana nam lo andom shi asmu ma rehabilitation ta drogi u alcohol. We do this all over Europe. Nam lo dilha ja madwar le Europa kolla. We visit. In more roof, they will post it. We say hi. We do love hello. We give you greetings from our Lord Jesus Christ. In 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 Muslim will bark up for some Jesus Christ. We often ask, how can we help? How can we drag in so as to keep us down? Eno. How can we encourage you? Keep us down and encourage you. Come. How can we give you hope? Keep us down to come tama. Because we have noticed, and I don't know if it's the same in Malta. As ahna in in Nutaina, um manafshekish listes Malta. That when you are in the same place for a while, you don't see, you don't see it. How do I say it? You see it through certain glasses. Le meta ente tkun post al hafna zmin. Enti tibda tara b'ċertu l-enti. And sometimes a foreigner has to come in. U meta xaħat min barra iġi. And tell you that you have an absolute beautiful country. U jajt lak li għandek pajjiz sabiħ. That the people are very friendly. Li n-nies u matħulin ħafna. We were reading that the Apostle Paul said that the people of Malta were very friendly. Konna dinna araw li l-Apostle Paolo għal li n-nies ta Malta kienu ħafna, ħafna t-wajba kienu friendly ħafna. And we know it is so. U wissa nafu li uwa vera. And we believe that God has a plan with the universe. U wahna nemnu li għal għandu pjan mal univers. He has a plan with his world. Għandu pjan mal dinja tijaw. He has a plan with Israel. Andu pjan ma Izrael. And he has a plan with Malta. O andu pjan al Malta. God is always at work. Allah uwa dejjem a dej dejjem jahdem. His eyes are on Malta. Ajne huma fuq Malta. His eyes are on you. Ajne huma fuqkom. His eyes are on this church. Ajne huma fuq dil knisja. He wants to do things through you. El mulejr tja amel la farid per mestakom. And it doesn't matter we are, it's a small island, maybe. Dini ya, izola, zaira, gzira, zaira. Maybe it's a small church. Knis ya, zaira. But God can do great things through small things. Malla yiste ya, mela farid gbar, mena farid zar. And we want to encourage you with this. O wedina wek bishahna ninkara jewko. Never think that what you're doing is not important. At tahzbu, li dak li et taamlu, mu ish importanti. Never think that the people you speak to, that it's, it doesn't matter. At tahzbu l-nis li edin t-kelmu, allu yom ma importa khomx. Never think that the prayers you say are not effective. At tahzbu l-talp li edin t-tolbu, mu mish effettivi. 
And my husband will say something about that. Because we did not always live this life. Far from it. We used to spend our times in the bars. Not standing in churches. But I believe there's some people here. And you really have the feeling that your prayers are not effective. You've asked and you've asked and you've asked. And you don't see it happen. We are here to encourage you. Don't give up. Don't give up. God has heard every word you spoke. Allah sema kul kelma lietu. He has seen every tear that you shed. He knows your questions before you ask them. And he carries them all in his heart. And he wants you to have faith. That it's going to come to pass. He will not withhold any good thing from you. Praise him for his goodness. Praise him for who he is. About prayers, right? I was just going to say my name, sorry. I was just going to say my name, This is Maria, remember? Yeah, <laughs> Maria. <laughs> I'm young. Yeah. I hear they use that name here in Malta. Young. Smite Lanka or Malta and come Dallas me it young. Oh. Oh, nice. Okay. Those normally are good people. Normalmente, Minismoyan, Umanistwaiba. You know, we are standing here now. Being grateful for the opportunity. Thanking God and this congregation to give us this opportunity. But we are now 56 years old. And there were many years that we were not welcome in the churches. This is hard, but it's sometimes true. We are both from the same town. And I will speak for me. I don't like to speak for Maria if I tell my personal story. In my hometown, there were a lot of bars, and they knew me in every bar. I was, I thought, enjoying my life to the fullest. We both grew up in church-going families. And there were a lot of good things about these families. <laughs> Our families were safe places. We heard all the Bible stories when we were children in Sunday school. There were a lot of traditions that were actually good traditions. But when we came to the age of 16, 17, and the world starts to pull on your heart, we were very curious. And we saw a lot of things that we wanted to check out. And we started to go out into the world and not to share the gospel, <laughs> to escape from the gospel. And in my family, there's, there were five children. And my parents. But my father was the only born again believer. My mother and us, we would go to church because it was a good habit. But when I didn't see the use for going to church, I stopped going. 
I didn't know the Lord. My father spoke about him. My father was a different kind of person. I always thought he was weak. Because he was humble. And forgiving. And he was also strict. <laughs> but I know every time my dad, my dad would hit me, even as a little child. I deserved it. But there was a certain age when he stopped doing that and he started talking. And I didn't like that. I didn't like the conversations. <laughs> and I started to go out, to go out to bars and drink and smoke and have different friends. And sometimes I would come home late at night. And my father would be there at the table. With a Bible and a concordance. Sometimes a glass of wine. He would sit there waiting for me. It scared me. <laughs> because if I knew if my dad was there, it would just be me and him. <laughs> and I knew what he would talk about. And it did something to my conscience. You know, when he got late in a bar, and somebody was buying a last round, I would think about what would happen in about half an hour. And I would say, no, no, I'll have a water. <laughs> uh, looking back, it was very smart. <laughs> but I was in the world. Enjoying it. And I met, I met Maria. She was also from a church-going family. But she was never touched. We, we, don't, we never understood the gospel. We thought, you know, if it's not for us, it's not for us. We would call ourselves Christians. We would sometimes even read the Bible. But we lived very different lives. And... and for 15 years, we were traveling all over the world. And really enjoying it. We would work six months in Holland. And travel six months. Because in the Southern Hemisphere, it's summer when it was winter in Holland. And we traveled all over. If the plane landed in a country and we took a bus to the capital and the center of the city, within two hours, we would know where the bars were, where we could find something to smoke. You get smart about these things. You know? But something happened at one time. And I was already 37 years old. Living the good life. <laughs> we had money, we had jobs. We had a house, we had a car, we had a motorcycle. You know? We were healthy. And my father got sick. And my father was always a person to be respected. He respected me in what, what I did. But he didn't agree with me. And he told me why. I knew it. You know? Because he was following the Lord. And he prayed for his children to follow the Lord. And we were not. 
And when I heard my father was sick, we went to their house. Meta smite le mesir ma ye flash mort e dart al genitori. And we found out he had cancer. O sir na na fuli kello kello cancer kello tumor. And uh, I was shocked, but also a little bit arrogant. You know, had shock and my first test here, no call count arroganti. I thought now we will see that all this Jesus talk is not really powerful. Oh, in update na sepe sanarau kif dal klim down la farit ko la fu jesu na rau le fil verita blasaha. He's dying like everybody else. Misiri ete mout pal hatihor. And he was. O kini ete mout. But I saw something. Marait shahaja. He was dying with a smile on his face. Misiri kini ete mout bdah afu wichu. It really impressed me. Odi vera baat li impressionata fmoki. It was shocking. Kina chokanti. Because I thought his death would prove to me that my thinking was right. Mela kina chokanti ashiena kont nakse pli il maut tiau kina tseti prova li ena xipti e o watai e po wamino. But I was wrong. Ma fil verita kont et nizbalia. Very wrong. Hafna konti et seyer et nizbalia. He weighed 40 kilos when he died. Metamit kul makinis an erbein kilo. And he testified about the love of Jesus. Imma ba ayet fuli mhabba ta Jesu. And the goodness of God. O tu yubiya ta Allah. To everybody that would hear it. Al kul min kini ismaha. Everybody that came to his bedside to encourage him left encouraged. Kul min kini murma jambu bishitu ikhda kul kuraj kun yitil u min hdeh u man karajuti. And before he died, we all had five minutes with him. Abel, Abel, meet. Ah, na kolla kena hamis minuti miyau. And he told me something that I'd heard before. O ali shaha jali ja kons mait Abel. But this time it touched, it touched me. Ma de dar ba vera mis sitni. He said, "Jan, ali Jan, I've always been proud of you. Ali Jan, deyem kont gburi big. And you know I don't agree with your lifestyle." I want you to remember just this one thing. If something happens in your life that you cannot control, don't try to fix it like you always do. But call on the name of Jesus. And it, it was difficult. That, those were his last words to me. He passed away a few hours after that. And I was sitting in my house, trying to just to visualize what my life would be like without my father. Because I knew he was a loving father. He had wisdom. From above. <laughs> but he also had mistakes. And I thought if somebody with mistakes like that, bad habits, bad temper sometimes, mistakes that other people told me about, was so sure about the love of Jesus for him. This is not the God that I thought God was like. God loved my father and, and convinced him of that fact. Allah <laughs> I, I didn't just hear it, I saw it. And I did something that I could never imagine I would do. Only hours after my father had passed away, I was, I was crying, and I said, Jesus, if you are real, I want to be able to die like my father with a smile on my face. And I don't care when. Because I know you can do it. And that's it. It was not even a prayer, it was a challenge. <laughs> and things started to change. From inside. I started to pray for people I didn't like. But does, is anybody a Christian in here? Do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had been Christian. 
And I thought something was wrong with me. Update, update. Nach se pjeb shi haja hazira fia. I felt emotions about things I never cared about. Update in hos certu emozioni it fa fari it lab at matait kas fu om. I didn't like to be drunk anymore. Ma ma richun kun iktar fi sakra. I stopped smoking. Wa aftin paye. There was no nobody forcing me to do any of that. Hat ma jalni na mel da ula fari. It came from inside. Im abdit hir ja. Minjawa. And my dear wife didn't like it. Because I, I was turning into a different man. Of course, she started to see the improvements also. But it was a different person. I had come to know the love of God. And as you know, I started looking for church. Not in my hometown. <laughs> it, it scared me to think that people saw me in church. <laughs> God still had to work on my ego a little bit. You know? <laughs> but people around me, in the family and friends, they some started to rejoice. Imma nis ta madwari shi habib shi familiari bdew yifirqu bi hadil bidla. My mother had a brother who had come to the Lord when I was a child. Ommi kella kella al huwa li iltaqa mal mulay meta jina kont ad nitfa. And they didn't like him anymore in the family. U lil dan dal dal bnida in particolari tsiju ma kenux ma kenux but he came to to the house to my parents' house for my mother's birthday one time. And he told me, young, since you left the church and started to go into the world when you were young. I've been praying for you. And I never gave up. Can you imagine this man that I hardly knew, really? Prayed for me. Every time he thought about me. And sometimes other people would get involved in family prayer. When I first started to go to church in our hometown, it was a little Pentecostal church. A niece of mine came into the church on Sunday morning. And she said, I heard you are in here and you have changed. And I didn't believe it. She came to the church to see if I had really changed. She stayed and she gave her heart to the Lord. Can you imagine what, what prayers do? What change does to people? Okay, I changed. And later, praise the Lord, Maria changed. People were praying for us. And people saw us changed and they wanted to know who Jesus was. But I was 38 years old when I first went to church out of my free will. <laughs> These people prayed for more than 20 years. And my father never got to see me as a believer. He had to pass away first. For me to see God's glory. In his eyes. Never ever give up. Praise the Lord and testify until your last breath. People are watching. If you have nieces, cousins, uncles, I don't care, family members that you love, that are not with the Lord, remember my story. They celebrate it. They had a family reunion in our house when we came to the Lord. These people that had prayed for us. You know, God, God hears prayers. But we don't always know everything that has to happen for him to prepare us. Or how stubborn we are in not allowing him to change us. But it happens. Have faith. 
call it will happen. Yeah, I wanted to say that when when Jan uh, came to faith. There were many people in our town who said Jan. He's a preacher now. I have to see it with my own eyes. Um, and I, this is part of our testimony. Because we have heard people say, if, if God can change Jan, then he can change anybody. And I think sometimes we have made God too small. We, we were talking about doubt earlier. Maybe we doubt the power that's in the name of Jesus. <coughs> He can change any person. No matter how no matter how bad the situation is. But we have to be careful not to doubt his power. Yeah. As well as the power of prayer. And maybe sometimes, this is how I feel sometimes, you sit there with your list. <laughs> you go like, here, God, here I am again. You know what I'm going to say. But yet, I have to believe and I will believe. That you do not want anyone to perish. And I pray that scripture over my family members. And I will put my faith in it. And I do not want to doubt that. In a way, I liked it the way you said it. We can doubt ourselves, but not God. Please. Not the power of the gospel. And not the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. So I think very often um, we can rejoice when we pray. A few years ago, <coughs> we started a family prayer group in our house. Because four of the five uh, brothers and sisters are uh, believers now. One more brother to go, one more brother to go. <laughs> And we said, you know, there is a new generation uh, growing up. We do not have children, but our brothers and sisters have children. Who's going to pray for them? I remember one of my nephews. He asked my father when my mother died. He said, Grandpa, when you die, who's going to pray for me? He was thinking about this. So we said, at least with Jan's family, every other Wednesday night we come in our house, we pray for one another, we pray for the rest of the family, we pray for the relationships and the marriages, if somebody's sick, we lay hands on him, and even young people in the family are joining it now. They, they, they see how important it is that we bring everything before God. That we all have to come to a point in life where we surrender to Jesus Christ. And what the, what the older generation did for us, we want to do for the next generation. If you don't take anything home from this this morning, maybe take this idea. Is there somebody in your family you can start a prayer group with? Don't preach. Don't preach. Pray. For the family members that are not believers. Mm -hmm. Come together, have a cup of coffee, and say we're going to pray for Uncle so and so. And 
and you'll see what will happen. Otarau seidri. We are, you know, living testimonies that ahana, ahana, prayer works. Ahana, ahana, testimonian sahaya li talb yahadem. So I hope that encourages you. Nitama li mleit kom bil kuraj. I want to finish with a scripture. Nishti nala bi scriptura. Most of us have heard this scripture many times. Hafna minna smainia de la scriptura. But this scripture is my life story. Ma de la scripture la hana araia la storia ta haiti. It's in 2 Corinthians 5. Se ara mille mitini quarantine capitulo hamsa. From verse 16. Min verse 16. No longer then do we judge anyone by human standards. Ma ahna manip aush ne judica will hat bli standards tal bniedem. Even if at one time we judge Christ according to human standards, we no longer do so. Anka yek abel konna ni judika wil Christu bli standards tal bniedem is samadnish. When anyone is joined in Christ, he is a new creation. Meta shahat uwa maout ma Christu uwa kreacion ishdida. The old is gone and the new has come. Lantik spitcha wil jdid is sayeth au. All this is done by God. Dan uwa kollosh pa. Mamul permes talla. Who through Christ changes us from enemies into friends. Le permes ta Jesu Christu yib dinna mine dewa al khbib. And gives us the task of making others his friends also. Uy tina dak il task dak il shol li namlu lohrain khbib tiyaw. What a task. Da da ish responsabita shorana. And he does it. He does it. Uy yamela. We just have to go. Ah na kum maridu namlu morru. Show the chains from inside. Nuru l bidla min jawa. It's such a powerful thing. Ija shahaja vera awija, vera psahjeta. Look forward to the change in people that you love. Har su becitament il bidla li se tarau fnis li tħobu. Testify. Ip au fahru l-mulej. Pray for them. It all boali jom. And watch God at work. U tarau il mulej jahdem. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, we, uh, we're so thankful for this morning, God. We thank you for the word that we heard this morning about um, making our prayers and all things to pray for you, God, to pray to you, Lord, and that your peace it will guard us and guard our hearts, Lord. I thank you, God, for uh, coming to your table and, and uh, understanding more what that means for us, God, the to share in the communion, Lord, with each other and with you, Lord God. And thank you so much for Jan and Maria, Father Lord. I thank you for their ministry, God, traveling light. I thank you for what a blessing they've been to me personally and to so many others, God. I thank you, Lord, for their testimony, God, just the evidence of you working in the hearts and the lives of people, Lord. Thank you for just the practical advice lord that how we can apply some of these things lord and pray with our family members lord and i also ask god that if a family member calls any of us this week lord with problems and things going on in their life lord but put it on our heart just to pray with them on the phone god or or go visit them in person and just pray over them lord so they can hear us hear the words coming out of our mouths lord praying for them god and and, and parents lord to hear their children hear their parents their mothers and fathers praying for them lord so much power in prayer god so lord we thank you for that lord god and uh, i want to thank you so much for uh, the testimony of, of jan's father and the last words that he heard his father say was call upon the name of jesus and he will save you lord thank you so much god thank you that your name means savior lord and you will save anyone who will call upon your name lord so, God, we thank you for your great salvation. Lord, as the prophet said, you've brought salvation with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, Lord. We thank you that your arms were stretched out for us, God. Lord, we praise you this morning. God, bless each one today, Lord. Bless the rest of our time here, Lord, as we uh, end with worship to you this morning, God. Bless every family member, every parent, every child, every grandchild, aunts, uncles, cousins, Lord. We ask, God, that your will be done in all of our lives, Lord. And we thank you, God, that you've given us everything we need to accomplish our time here on this earth, Lord. God, we give you all the praise and all the glory, God. To your name we pray, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.